Your audio just dropped hello, out. Hello, hello. Hello, Heartrepreneurs. Good to be with you. Delighted that you've joined us. And I have a couple things to ask you before we start. Number one, share. Number two, invite your friends. Number three, pay attention. No multitasking. Be here in the moment, fully getting all the juice out of this. And number four, let go of any expectations and anything that gets in your way and be fully present. And some of you hear me speak on stage. You've heard me say this before. Let it come in. It might be a tight pair of jeans in the moment. Wear it around anyway. Try it on anyway and be here and be fully present. I just want to let you know of one thing. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for the thumbs up. I'm not going to be looking at the comments today because I really want to be here to give you the best experience with Brian that I possibly can. So before I bring Brian in and then we let him do his magic, which truly is magic, some of you know my story, some of you have read my story, and some of you have heard me being very open and very transparent. So I really feel like I need to kick it off in that way, and I'm just going to ask for you to give me space for a moment to do that. I believe I met Brian about six years ago, and at the time that I met him, I was having a lot of reflex sympathetic dystrophy, I can't even get those words out, um, and was not in a good space and was not well at all. And I met with Brian, um, was going to help him with his business, and he instantly recognized that I needed help. And the whole thing turned around, and in nine minutes, and I know that's going to sound flabbergasting, and that's okay, just accept it, I'm speaking truth. In nine minutes, I instantly, literally, did not have the pain that I was suffering with from RSD. I actually went into remission for two full years, which actually is kind of unheard of when you're at the, quote, stage that they diagnosed me at. And I got scared. So I'm being very honest. It was like, what happened? It's very powerful. It's very almost magical. And I actually got scared of Brian. And I responded in a really horrific way and not in a way that I'm used to responding and not from my heart and not from clarity and not from presence. And some of you know this and some of you don't, but shortly after that, I woke up literally and um, Brian forgave me. And really, truly, that is where and how I learned forgiveness. The About to Break book, which will be out in 2019, I'm thrilled about it, is my whole life story. And there's a lot in there that will probably really shock you that you have no idea about me. And there's a big section about how I experienced forgiveness with Brian. So for the last few years, Brian has been my secret weapon. I haven't really talked about this Many of you know that I have a lot of coaches and consultants that work with me, and I have lots of different advisors. Brian has helped me with every aspect of personal development that you can possibly imagine. And when I recently went into another RSD flare-up, a couple of sessions with Brian, and I'm doing great. I don't know if you can see how great I'm doing, but I am excited to tell you I'm actually in my office where I haven't been for four months because I couldn't walk up the steps. So I asked Brian to come here and to share because I've been working for 40 years. Yeah, I started when I was one. Um, for 40 years, helping business owners in various ways. And for the last 20, coaching and consulting and mentoring with over 5,000 business owners and some of the biggest names in the industry, I have been their mentor and their coach and their consultant. And I always look at why aren't these business owners achieving what they need to achieve? Like what is truly holding them back and what stops them? Because I can give them every tool, all the proven strategies that I know work, but there's these blocks and they're not aware of them. See, I wasn't aware of my own blocks, right? They're not aware of them. They're unconscious. They're at a level where you don't see them. Brian works at this very deep level. I know there's a lot of you that are personal development gurus and healers and just amazing people in this group, many of you that I've worked with. I love you all and I admire you all, yet I'm bringing Brian because he works at this level that I've never seen. It's so deep and he does something that I'm going to mention and they're called spell breaks. And I will just tell you, spell breaking is what makes all the difference. 
Bell breaking, in my opinion, is what gets results. And I asked Brian to come and to be with you today because we need to shift the paradigm in business and in life. And we're doing that, right? We're all here as heartrepreneurs. And please, gang, continue to pass this out, invite your friends, share with groups. This is really, really important. We are here consciously doing business as heart-to-heart -heart service business owners. And we have to take notice that the paradigm of business and life is changing. So before I bring Brian in, just remember, you can type in questions, you can type in comments. Brian will be peeking at them off and on during our time here together. I'm not gonna focus on those. I'm gonna focus on getting the best out of Brian. And I'm gonna tell any one of you that's listening, if you have a podcast, if you have a teleseminar, if you have a webinar, if you have a summit or a live event coming up, if I were you, I would get Brian to speak there. And I'm serious. I have been with him. I have seen him speak. And a last thing, a couple of you said, well, Terry, why can't I do a webinar with you? And why aren't you endorsing me? And I was very clear. This is like a one-time thing that I chose to do because I know this will help you at the highest and deepest level. And if I find somebody else who's another Brian, and I don't think there is one, I might consider it. Bell breaking is unique. Brian is unique and his gifts are unique. So we're going to look at what the constraints are that hold you back and we're going to go deep. So Brian, my friend, thank you. Aloha. Good morning. Yes, it's morning for you. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's in Hawaii, as you can probably tell. So at first, I just want to say, Brian, um, what actually do you want people to be here for? Why should they stay and be present on this live? Mm. Well, if you have anything in your life that, and I want, I want you to think about this for a minute and reflect. If you have anything in your life that you really, 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 really want, and it appears to you that it's staying out of reach. So there's the house, the bank account balance, that relationship, that lighter body, <laughs> or that a disease-free body, whatever it might be. There's something you really, really want, and it has seemed to you that so far it's staying out of reach. If that, or there's anything in your life that you really, really, really don't want, and I mean you don't want it, and you've been not wanting it, and it seems like no matter what happens, it keeps coming back again and again. If you have either one of those, and you would like for that to change, today is in all probability the highest chance of that actually changing for you or at the very least starting to change. And I find that when we change the deepest issue, not only does the business change, but the fact is that in my universe, there's no separation between personal and business. So when you change your deepest constraint in business, you have addressed your deepest personal constraint. And if you want to step into the most magical life possible, truly free, with whatever that is that you most want to go away, gone, and what you most want to come to you, coming to you, you'll definitely want to tune in. And I know, like Terry said, she's gonna, she's really good at that. She's going to pull the best out of me. I mean, I, I have awesome stuff coming out because that's what my intention is. And I know with me and Terry playing together, this is going to be an amazing event. And you guys can ask questions. I will be monitoring the, uh, the comments to an extent. Great, thank you. So I think let's start off with what's a constraint? I mean, how do people know they even have a constraint? Ah, well, the, that question is perfect and the clue is in what I was inspired to say right before you said it. That's so perfect. If there's something, okay, so a lot of people can relate to their bank about, bank account balance being an issue. You know, like I want that extra comma. I don't want just an extra zero. I want an extra comma. And you try and you try and you do and you do and then you hear, wait, I'm not supposed to use the word try anymore. So I'm going to try to not use the word try. And then you do and, and you really, really go at it with everything that you've got. And somehow it seems there's a glass ceiling that you keep hitting. Maybe it is a disease. Maybe there's some health condition and you've tried everything. And no matter what you do, maybe it's those extra five or 50 pounds or whatever that you literally have tried and tried and tried and tried. You've done diet after diet. When you notice that there's something there that's staying continuous 
that there's continuity of something you don't want, you can be absolutely certain that you have at least in that area a constraint. And I, obviously, Terry, you know we can go way deeper, but does that does that answer the basic for you? Yeah, it does. So let's say I'm a business owner and it's like, well, I'm taking all these proven strategies that everybody says to work and they're working for everybody else. They're not working for me. Um, but I've done personal development for years. And by the way, those of you who don't know, prior to Brian, I spent 800000 That's right, $800,000 on personal development starting at age 15. I hired the best of the best of the best people, every big name in the industry. Um, you know all the big people. And I didn't just go to their date with whoever events for 25 grand. I hired them. Okay? I hired the person. Um, and so I always thought, well, clearly, could I possibly have any more personal issues? What could be left? So what do we say to the person who's like, okay, I'm doing all the proven strategies. I'm not making the money. What's going on? Ah, now there's a big one. Okay, so there's, you may have to rein me in a couple of times, Terry. You know how I can, I, I can get on a rant. I gotcha. Um, okay, well, the first thing that I want to say is that for those of you hearing that who haven't spent 800000 out of all the people that I've worked with, Terry is number one in that category. 800000 to my knowledge, is the highest investment of anyone that's ever come to work with me. I have a couple people that have spent over half a million on personal and professional development. And I would say that um, got 95% of the people who really do the deepest work with me uh, have spent Every our, God, maybe a hundred percent of the people that get the closest to me have spent high six figures. You know, let's say two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand and up, and they feel almost literally exactly what Terry said. I have spent all this money. I've spent ten, twenty, thirty years. Why in the world? How do I know that your stuff is going to work? And why would I even be crazy enough to think that yours can help me when I've tried absolutely everything? And without exception, and I don't say that lightly, without exception, within the first hour of exposure to my work, they say to me the same thing, Terry, and that is, I just got more out of that hour than I got out of those 30 years. What planet are you from and what did you just do to me? And so for that person who, in, in this position that you said, Someone who's in that position and they're thinking, I've, I've done that. Why can this work? What, what's the difference here? The fact is that in my own $300,000 self-improvement journey over the course of 30 plus years where I stopped my life and I spent tens of thousands of hours on every type of self-help available, I was able to spot the holes in it all. And I'll make one little hint, and I know we're going to probably talk more about this, Terry. The, the, hmm, this is going to be very controversial for some of you, but one of my favorite quotes is that the greatest device that humans ever invented to prevent themselves from experiencing God is religion. And I've contemplated that. I thought it was just a brilliant statement. And then I realized a few months ago that self-improvement is the greatest wall that humans have ever invented to prevent themselves from being able to experience their perfection. Because if you believe in self-improvement and virtually, not all, but virtually everybody in the self-improvement arena, in any, even in the spiritual realms, is still focused on making things better. They're focused on you becoming the best person you can be, which is all about improvement which intends at its core that you are not already perfect and that you have things that you can improve and when your focus is on improvement the way this universe works you are you will receive an endless number of things that are messed up that need to be improved and so i see i'm going to go i'm going to go a little bit further again rain me in at any point Let's do it this is good. Ta Terry and I were talking a few weeks ago, and I said, I see the farm, the uh, the entire self-help industry, this multi-billion dollar industry. Why do people call themselves self-help junkies? Has anyone ever actually thought, I mean, we all say it, but has anyone ever thought about it? And my book is 
is humorously titled Break Your Self-Help Addiction because once people come to this, they're done with self-help. They give away their million-dollar success library and they realize they've got it. And I see the, the self-help industry as a whole is a total mirror of a mental pharmaceutical industry where you get – you find out what's wrong with you first and then you get a prescription – and then you find out a few months later, oh, crap, with that prescription, now I need this prescription to fill what that prescription didn't do and handle the side effects. And you end up so confused and so full of toxicity and confusion and frustration. A lot of people do get to the point of basically giving up, but they can't give up because even when they say, I'm never doing another course, the last – lady that came out and sat and did four days with me here in Hawaii. She's I'm never doing another course. I'm never doing another course. But when life doesn't get better, that pain doesn't go away. So the, the, the core here is getting to the deepest, deepest, deepest place in you where the issues actually arise from and completely dissolving them. And when you do that, your whole life changes. So as we walk around today, um, if I were to say, oh, what are my issues? Do you think I could list all my issues and you think I know all my issues? <laughs> not a chance. Absolutely not a chance. The, the whole point is that the vast majority of our issues arise from our unconscious areas. Now, I have some different approaches to that. There's a whole bunch of belief elimination experts and a lot of subconscious experts, a lot of psychologists and all that. I, I play this in a very different way. However, one commonality is that our deepest issues are arising from our unconscious. Just Here's an example. So let's look at someone with a weight issue who says, I'm going to lose weight. And then the next thing they know, they're sitting with a 52-pound bag of chips, and they don't even know how it got in their arms. Like, what? How? When did I? I thought I wasn't going to do this anymore. So the the stimuli that cause us to do the behaviors that perpetuate this stuff is all hidden from us. And I find that basically nobody ever knows or can know what their actual deepest core issue is and that's why people get so frustrated mm. no they don't know you have no idea you, you you think you know and then you go to work on those things and when that doesn't work you feel even more frustrated so there's your evidence that's actually a very good point so you know there's a lot of people out there brian that talk about the law of attraction and if we just you know focus and think and feel what we want, we can have whatever we want in the universe. And yet, uh, some of some of you are at a recent event that I did where we took all of our energy together in a huge room and we focused on a million dollars coming through that ceiling. And we are high energy folks and we are believers. And when I had you all open your eyes, you told me there was not a million dollars. So Brian, what's up with this law of attraction thing? Oh boy, I, I didn't know that. you would go there. Okay. <laughs> I'm there. happy to go there, as you know. All right, this is going to be the one where you really might have to rein me in, and, and I'm going to encourage you listening to really breathe deep and just be curious. The odds of you fully agreeing with me as I go through these words, very low. And even those of you who are like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to probably hit a place where you're going to, wait, what? So just breathe deep, be open, be curious. I don't need you to change your beliefs at all. I'm not concerned about that. Okay, here's the root of the root of the root. Every great teacher and seer that has ever lived and ever existed has shown us that there's no physical universe here. Now, this has been known for at least 10,000 years by those who knew. And generally, whenever one of those people showed up and showed and told everybody, hey, by the way, you're free. It's an infinite, unlimited universe. There's only infinite, unlimited energy and nothing's physical. Those people were either, either like boiled or burned or put on crosses or, you know, like that has happened for a very long time. Uh, however, it's that truth has been told and it's been available to those that want to hear it. Well, a few decades ago, the quantum physicists said, oh, wait, holy crap. <laughs> they were right. If we go down into an atom of anything, Here's an atom of gold, here's an atom of hydrogen, here's an atom of lead. If we go down into that atom, there is literally nothing there. It is light blinking in and out of existence at specific frequencies, and these frequencies make that non-stuff gold, and these frequencies make that non-stuff 
hydrogen, and these frequencies make it lead. So it's actually nothing physical there. Even if you go down into the nucleus of the atom, oh, surprise, there's nothing there but lights blinking in and out of existence. So the whole mass of everything in the universe is non-physical stuff. There is nothing there. There's nothing physical there. So therefore, no matter what you build out of it, there's still nothing there but energy vibrating. So no matter what complex structure you build out of it, a person, a banking institution, or a planet, or a solar system, there's still nothing physical there. There is no universe ultimately here. So what does that do to all of your universal laws? They're part of a paradigm that we hold the universe in place and now we're at the mercy of that physical universe and we're at the mercy of those universal laws. And that's actually Newton's paradigm that's over 400 years old that even my spiritual friends, my spiritual friends are still living in the Newtonian paradigm and suffering under it while talking about and claiming to be a part of Einstein's universe that there's no physical universe here. So therefore, those who, what, the way I see it, Terry, I, I was able to actually stay on track. I'm very surprised and happy with that. But here's the deal. Most of us started out in religion. Our parents had some religion and we started in it and we believed it. And then at some point we said, oh, well, I'm no longer religious. I've discovered the law of attraction and now I'm spiritual. See how spiritual I am? Without realizing the law of attraction is just another religion. It's just another set of beliefs that you have. Oh, why did I, how did I create that? And why? Uh, no, I joked about writing a book called How to Beat Yourself Up with the Law of Attraction. Okay. <laughs> and I see most people doing it. So it's not necessary. It's just another unnecessary overcomplication that prevents people from getting everything they want is how I see it. I'd be real curious, so people type in your comments. I see somebody actually crying one. Um, I don't know what you're crying about. I'd love to know what you're crying about. So type in some of your comments. We've got 83 loves, 32 thumbs, a crying, and six wows. And type in your comments. <laughs> let, let us know what's going on and what's coming up for you. And I asked you at the very, at the very beginning to be open, to allow in, and if you don't allow in new information and you keep walking around with your own beliefs and your own constraints that you don't even recognize, you're not going anywhere. So the goal today is to help you break through, and as Brian said, your business and your life are not separate entities. Your business and your life are not separate. I just want to speak to that for a moment. So. You know, I'm a business consultant, and I'm really clear when some of you have come to me and said, can you help me with this life issue? And I'm like, I don't do life coaching anymore. Uh, well, you're a clinical psychologist. Yeah, that's an old thing that I did. I am one thing, very myopic, 20 years, business consultant. That's who I am, and that's what I do. You know, what I've come to realize, Brian, over the last probably three or four years with my clients is not addressing their life stuff is a disservice to them because I can give them all the tools and all the proven strategies, yet if they have all of these personal constraints that they're not even aware of, I can't move them forward. What do you have to say about that? Oh, wow. You know, I about uh, maybe two and a half years ago, I was inspired to create a webinar on this. Mm. And what I saw is this idea of the core constraint and oh you know what if this was actually this, I'll tell you right now I'll make a confession my strongest weakness in my life is time I literally sometimes don't know if it's yesterday or if it's next year so I think this was actually about four years ago and I ended up speaking at an event and I sat down to create it was all for business owners and I sat down and contemplated how can I help these people to see that there's no such thing as business. There's literally no such thing as business. And so I, I'll bring that in as, as part of my answer to this. When you think about a business for even a moment, okay, so you're, you're convinced that you're doing business, but when you put your business hat on, who's under it? Mm -hmm. 
You know, that's you. And that's you with all of the stuff. So here you were as a baby. You're born to those lovely people who probably were not trained, you know, at how to be the perfect parents. The odds of them giving you unconditional love for more than 30 seconds at a time, incredibly low. Those few of us who ever even got that. And they were probably not a model. I mean, would you take your parents' relationship advice? If, if your parents were going to sit down and teach you how to have the perfect marriage, would you listen? Um, there's so many of these areas. And the trauma that we experienced, the blame that we experienced, those of us that were hit, that were smacked, that were treated unfairly, that were taught that we were stupid, that we were failures, that we were clumsy – all the trauma, and, and maybe we'll talk more about trauma because I have a very radically different definition of trauma uh, than anyone I've ever talked about talked with. All of that trauma and all the conclusions we reached and all the beliefs that we reached and all the habits that we got in and all the emotional addiction to fear and anger and sadness and all the beliefs that we built around that, the whole paradigm that we built. Sweetheart, when you put your hat on, to do your business day, you put on your business hat, under that hat is all that stuff. So then we went to work and they said, you got to separate business from personal. What the hell are you talking about? I'm the person doing the business. So I don't care if you're working a nine to five or a seven to eight. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter if you've been doing your career for 10 years and if you've had every business coach in the world, what I say is you can take every money, business, and success course known to mankind and you can have the best coaches in the world. If you don't deal with your deepest root stuff, you're either battling it or compensating for it. You're not free of it. Mm. So. That gave me goosebumps. So um, I'm speaking to my client family members, and there's lots of them here. You know, maybe that's the missing component. Um, maybe that's the next thing that's needed is getting this extra piece. And so I do want to talk about trauma. Since you brought up the word, I was already thinking about it. I, I was on a recent interview on my radio show, and someone was talking about trauma. And it was not the definition that I've ever heard you speak of of trauma, and I relate to yours so much more. So I'd love for you to chat about that a bit. All righty. I, I would love to. And this is where we're getting into the stuff that could become like immediately helpful to, to everyone listening. We've been theory, and we'll, we'll, we'll go from theory to practice. Um, someone had just asked me if there's a, a language for what I do, and there is. I call it the level five paradigm, and then the actions that I do I call spell breaking. We can talk more about that. Okay, so trauma. Uh, and this is where I'm going to get uh, – I'm going to get super – not superhuman, but I'm going to get superhuman with you. I'm going to be really, uh, I'm going to get down into the stuff here. When I communicate with people, it's no holds barred. Uh, Terry, you know that. And, and I, I also know that in a, quote, business setting like this, there's a certain amount of protocol and, and decorum. I do my best to, to play by the rules and stay, you know, within within reason. But not too, I don't do too well at it. So here's the deal. You're an infinite, unlimited being. And if anything that you make out of the infinite, unlimited energy that's not physical, if anything that you make out of it is still that energy, then what do you think you are? You're infinite, unlimited, flawless, perfect, eternal energy that's not created nor destroyed. There's nothing wrong or right or good or bad about you, any of that. None of that's true. And yet, we all believe deeply even those of us spiritual who wear our beads and sometimes wear you know white shirts and sit around and go om and namaste brother we're still full of shit most of the time we're still programmed with all the stuff that we were ever programmed and it is tied up in the emotions from the traumatic experiences that happened during our lives. So I wanna I'm gonna sweep at this like from two or three different X-ray angles to really help you get it in the in the fewest minutes that I can do this. So you're you're this little baby and you're laying there and you're hungry and you're crying and mommy's usually there and mommy usually either sticks a little sticks a little rubber rubber nipple 
in your mouth or this warm booby thing and oh my god bliss oh, oh i'm so safe and i can feel mommy and everything's okay and one day you're laying in that crib and you're really hungry and you're a little cranky and you yell and mommy doesn't show up listen very carefully this is not you're going to see that this is ultra relevant in just a minute mommy doesn't show up and you get a little bit more hungry and you cry a little louder and mommy doesn't show up now nobody told you that mommy's downstairs and she just got something that to her is very upsetting news and she's sitting downstairs and she kind of tunes out and she's sitting there crying she's dealing with her upset and you start screaming and you scream louder and you start to panic because your ability in your little nine pound body your ability to go without food is very 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 short and you're starting to panic and you are starting to freak out and you're screaming and you start shaking and sweating and let's be honest you could die all right you could die and you scream as loud as you can and finally mommy comes up and she roughly grabs you and she pulls you to her and she, her emotions are stirring and she is crying and she's feeding you and what energy do you think is flowing into your body from her so you are just laying in bed literally dying and screaming that one episode at six months of age can be enough to implant the feeling of abandonment and I can't trust mommy it's not uh, it's not unconditional I'm not safe here will that ever happen again and that insignificant 15 minute event according to any of us powerful smart adults God, we're full of crap sometimes that is an unimaginably unimaginably traumatic experience for that baby with lifelong repercussions and so for the rest of our lives we every time we're close to someone we start to feel this inexplicable feeling like I don't want them to leave I don't want to lose them I don't, I don't want them to go away and so we go into these unconscious behaviors and in truth the baby is still lying in the crib screaming inside of you and that baby is the one that hijacks your mouth and your behaviors and causes you to cling to your lover for dear life until you cling so much that they finally leave so you all you find out 30 40 years later in all my relationships I really get close to somebody and they leave and I have no idea why and it is because of that trauma inside of you that is hijacking you now if mommy had come to you and she hadn't had that upsetting experience for herself and she had picked you up and said oh sweetie I didn't hear you and she soothingly lovingly held you up against her and soothed you and cooed and just adored you until you had that final ah, that babies do that trauma would have been gone out of your body and your whole freaking life of relationships would be different now if you contemplate that I'm really curious and I'm having just so you know Terry I'm having a slight glitch with the comments I'm showing 40 something comments I'm only show I'm only seeing four I've refreshed the page I'll do it again in a moment I want you guys do continue with your questions because we will come back and we'll, we'll get into these what I really want to encourage you to do right now is I want you to think for one minute could I have any of those traumas can I understand does that make sense what Brian just said one little moment at six months and could that really affect our lives could it really create an emotion that's frozen and stuck in the deepest part of us side note from Brian this is why I'm not into the belief change stuff all these subconscious experts that are primarily focused on belief change belief is nowhere near as deep as emotion which is nowhere near as deep as the trauma itself and so when I'm working with someone I literally help them to dissolve those issues from their physical body from their emotional body from their mental body and from the universe where it's projecting so what I want to encourage you to think right now and, and feel free to comment about this 
Do you think you might have one or two thousand of those tra those types of traumatic events? And then when you think about what about when you were five years old and you were running on the sidewalk in the bright sunlight having the time of your life and you fell and skinned your knee and your friend or your parent said, you stupid, clumsy idiot, when you were laying there in pain already and now you've tied physical pain, which is trauma, with the emotional trauma of being told that you were stupid and clumsy and every one of those seemingly insignificant, they're not. They're quite the opposite. Every one of those seemingly insignificant little things is stacked and woven together in every freaking one of us. So I have literally worked with billionaires. I've worked with homeless people. You name it. And what I'm talking about is universal. Mm. Let me speak to that for a minute. That was amazing. That was awesome. Um, I actually have watched Brian work with... I don't know how many people, probably hundreds of people. And no matter what the issue, whether it was a personal issue, whether it was a health issue, a business issue, relationship, doesn't really matter. I would see him do these, we'll get into this in a few minutes, spell breaks. And I would see people release. Um, I, one guy who was choking so bad, uh, I remember I went in running to get Brian. I'm like, this guy is like sick. He's choking so bad he can't even breathe. And like five minutes later, the guy came back and he was all calmed down. I've seen somebody else who had a migraine that couldn't even lift his head up and the migraines were gone. So, you know, really letting, really asking all of you to keep letting this in and anything that isn't feeling quite right and is uncomfortable, good, because that's how you transform and that's how you change. We can't stay in the same old place that feels comfortable and really make transformation in our life. So. Um, what is level five? What does that mean? I couldn't wait to ask that. <laughs> okay, you know, I love when people ask that question and I don't and, and this time I'm gonna I'm gonna find the shortest way of answering that I ever have. So here's here's the way I look at it. In I've had this I've had this gift since I was about three years old, um, Terry, and you listening. I've had this gift of being able to look at a person and hear them for a few seconds and know exactly how they're holding themselves back. I mean, I can see it. I can hear it. I can feel it. And that's a weird place to be. So for three, I'm, I'm 53 now. So for 50 years in this body, I have been able to do this. And I have constantly sought and intended, how can I help people bigger, deeper, faster? That's really what's running inside of me. So I'm always looking at how can I explain this in ways that people can comprehend it, that they can get it, and that they can use it. Well, this level five, hey, I appreciate all the love, everybody. Um, so as you guys are typing in the comments, hit the hearts. Every time something happens that you really like, that's really being helpful, hit the hearts, hit the, th hit the thumbs, let us know, and Terry and I will go back through these comments afterwards. Uh, and we'll highlight those things for you. And, and we'll also highlight it in our comment responses after the replay as well. So I see that there are five different paradigms that we can live in on this planet. And the first level is I'm, I'm just going to blast through these, Terry. And if you decide you want me to go deeper on one, I'll, I'll happily do it. Okay. So five levels, five paradigms that we are all living in. Every one of us is living inside of one of these. The first one is, I call it meat suit, and that is that we believe we are a chunk of meat in a giant machine, and it, there are millions of these people still living amongst, amongst us. They're basically cavemen and cave women who believe life is hard, There's, I just gotta battle and get enough bananas to bring home to be able to make it through the day, and they they work with their back. You know, it's all hard work and it's all – that's what they got to do. And, the, and these people live among us. We have been them at some points in our lives, probably all of us in earlier life. And these people are stressed. They're struggling and they die young. The second paradigm is I call it being a mindset or a mind. So we move from meat suit to mind. The, the people that are minds among us in the second paradigm, they think a little smarter. They think I'm not one of those – 
dumbass meat suits. I mean, I hire those dumbass meat suits. You know, I I get more bananas. I get what I want faster, bigger, better because you know I'm a little smarter than they are. They're still fighting against the universe. It's them against the universe. They're still battling against the giants. Them against the world, and they're stressed out of their minds. A lot of anger, a lot of frustration. The third level. I call religiosity. Now, as I go through these, you can think, which one do I relate most with and how, what does he remind me of? Okay, third one is religiosity. Religiosity is where we hear that there might be some kind of a God thing somewhere and that there's a bunch of rules. And if you'll learn these rules, you can either get to heaven or you can really master the rules. You can get the front seats in heaven. You get the best seats closest to God. And now we have all these rules and all these laws so that we can live our lives while getting enough bananas to still make it just like the meat suits and the mindsets. The fourth paradigm is where the vast majority of people that I meet these days live. And I'm talking like almost everybody. And that, that fourth paradigm I call being spiritual. And what I mean by that is we go, wait, you know, I think this religion thing might be missing something. There might be more to this than religion. So I am going to, I'm going to find out how to be spiritual. I'm going to find out how, okay, this God is inside of me and God's inside of us. And we step into this idea of spirituality without realizing that we've traded in our religion for another religion, the religion of spirituality. And almost everybody in the spiritual, being spiritual paradigm feels frustrated, they feel hypocritical, and usually I hear these words, I feel like I'm talking it, and I understand it, but I'm not walking it, and I can't seem to get it from here into here, and that's, again, literally almost everybody. And the fifth paradigm, so I call it the level five paradigm, the level five paradigm is when we wake up either temporarily for a moment or permanently. We wake up to realize infinite, unlimited energy is. Love is. Bliss is. Abundance is. And we experience that. So now let's contrast a little tiny bit of level four paradigm to level five paradigm. In the level four paradigm, we talk about abundance. We talk about oneness. And we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we are not living it and we're very frustrated and it is very difficult and it is very confusing. And the law of attraction is a firm fixture in the level four paradigm. I'm, I'm trying to live by it. I mean, sometimes I get a, you know, find $20 on the parking lot or sometimes I'm able to get a parking place. But why do these things still suck? You know, that, that's a good summary. So that when I refer to level five, that's what it's all about. Living in the level five paradigm that completely exits the Newtonian paradigm. There is no physical universe. I don't even perceive a physical universe any, anymore. I know that I'm infinite, unlimited energy in a state of infinite possibilities. And I'm going to take a liberty here for just a moment. So let's, let's make this a, a, a bit of an experience. If you will... There's definitely some um, happy feedback coming in here, the little bit that I can see. If, you, if everybody just close your eyes for one minute unless you're driving. And just take one minute to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine if I did live in a universe that was literally non-physical. If that, you know, I've been, I've heard it from Brian. I've heard it from other people. Brian's not the first person that said this. He just like might be the first I've met that's actually living it and able to help other people live it this way. Okay. So if you were living in a universe where nothing was physical and you knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that that disease that's been so-called haunting you for the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years, if you knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that you could reach a place of, of relaxation where that disease could totally leave, how would you feel? And if you knew that you could reach a place of presence that was deep enough, relaxed enough, and calm enough that literally your bank account could change behind the scenes and it wouldn't be breaking any rules or any laws because all those laws you made up in order to have this experience of limitation. How would you feel if you knew that no matter how your relationships have been, even if you're in one right now that sucks, 
How would you feel if you knew there was no physicality, there was no continuity other than what you hold in place with your beliefs, much of which has been based in trauma, and it all could dissolve instantaneously, not over time, but right now, and you could literally find yourself in the loving, blissful, deeply connected, harmonious relationships of your dreams. How would you feel? Okay, because that's what's here waiting for you. And it's available, ever present. The whole universe that we live in arises and passes away a septillion times per second. Not some of it, not part of it. It's here and then it's not. It's here and then it's not. And it's faster than our senses can detect. And it is available to you right now that the whole thing can change if you let go. So what's got to be dealt with and what, Terry, you've been talking about, you're probably about to go here even deeper. Releasing that deepest, deepest, deepest stuff is all that's necessary for all of those things to be able to change. That was that was awesome. I just realized that some of your clients might even be on here. Um, so if you are and you've had an experience, whether working with Brian in a group program or you've been blessed to spend some days with him in Hawaii, you know, share your experiences here in the comments because I do know that sometimes people go, "What." Um, and that's what happened to me. So, you know, going back to my transparency <laughs> in the beginning, I, I had been dealing with, quote, RSD for a very, very long time. And I had tried 19 different kinds of alternative treatments, nine medical treatments. I was taking 29 medications a day. Plus, I had ketamine infused into my body for many, many months, which, if you don't know, is an elephant tranquilizer and is truly an unpleasant thing. And so it was a little odd to me that, wait a minute, I was with this guy for nine minutes and what? Like I don't have pain anymore. However, it's factual and it's true. And I can also tell you that, you know, some of you were with me at some of my recent events and even in Albuquerque, what, it was just two weeks ago, I went and came back in a wheelchair. I don't need a wheelchair anymore. I'm walking. I literally am walking on the beach every single day. I uh, walked up the steps in my house. Um, I'm absolutely perfectly fine and no longer have any sensations. I'm doing great. So what I want you to hear is for me for a moment. The reason that I really wanted Brian to come, and there's a lot of them, but one of them is I don't know a lot of people who actually live in this way, live level five. I know people who talk about law of attraction and all of these things. I'm not going to mention a name. But one of the biggest law of attraction people was in the secret and just somebody that I, I really like and I really admire and I've done some TV and radio with and spoke on some of their stages. I've been around them day in and day out. And yeah, they are in the law of attraction some of the time. And others of the time, they are not, okay? They're totally the way they are. And that, I don't, I'm not dissing them. I'm just sharing my experience. I've actually spent quite a bit of time with Brian, and I've never, ever seen him not be in the same exact place and living life from love and from bliss and from peace and from forgiveness and in this level five place. So what I want you to hear is that it may sound unusual, don't push against it, breathe it in and let it in, because for me, it has happened so rapidly and so quickly, there are times that I'm thinking, what? And there, there has been things, have been things in my life that I have tried to work on, right? All that working on personal development. And they never really went away. I was very good at going, yeah, okay, go away. I'm not going to look at you. Go away. I'm not going to look at you. And they were still there. And in the work Brian has done with me, you know, they, they come up and they get dissolved. And, you know, when they're dissolved, it's like, wow, I even can see a difference in the way I look, not only in the way that I feel. Um, Brian, I would love for you to talk about spell breaks. I think they're ready to hear that. Mm. Okay. So, and I'm watching the comments. They're actually coming through fast now. For some reason, I still have a, I, I've never had this view on Facebook ever before. So it's maybe something that they're if, experimenting if you, with. Um, on the comment tab, and there's most relevant, new, and real time. Nope. Network. Not show. Yes, right. it's actually not showing. That's the whole thing. It's, right. it's literally not. Facebook now, is doing its thing. And it, it maybe if I click the video, but if I do, then I'm going to be dealing with us in real time, and that us about three seconds later, and my whole brain's going to fall out. So, <laughs> we'll stay present, uh, and we promise we will answer 
all of your comments. So I, I really ask you to keep commenting and know that you will get our full attention after the live. I promise you that. Amen. Okay, so you know what, Terry, I'm going to answer the question. I, I want to reiterate something. You, you're right that we do have some of my clients, actually. There's people uh, on that are either in my programs or who have done one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. So if you will, um, those of you that work with me, you can just type in what some of the experiences that you've had. And in this place, we're not doing actual testimonials. So you can feel free to mention the, the medical miracles just from your perspective, things that have happened. And... Um, so I'm going to talk about what the spell breaking is that does this. When I was three and I noticed, wow, I could look at someone and I could hear them for a few seconds and I could feel how they were holding themselves back. Now, what, here's what I didn't know. I was unconditionally loving everything and everyone that showed up in front of me. I had no idea. There was no one to explain that to me. My parents had no concept of any of it. And in that unconditional love, I could look at the person and see, oh, wow, look how they're holding themselves back. And the weird thing is I could tell them how, how they were holding themselves back with my three-year-old vocabulary. I, it's, it's like um, we've all heard and seen the child prodigies who come in and they, you sit the two-year-old down at the piano and they start to play Mozart. It's like, okay, you are remembering that from your last time in a body, aren't you? Because there's not too many other ways. Of, you're, you're channeling somebody else. And I came in with a gift like that in the personal development and awakening arena, which is apparently super weird. And I had it my whole life. And so all along, I've been spell breaking with people. Now, what changed was about seven years ago, I decided to do it as a business and I woke up and realized only do it with people that are asking for it. And so... What that is, what it boils down to is when you were six months old and you were laying in that crib and mommy didn't come for those extra 15 minutes and you felt so much trauma, you felt such fear and you were starving, your body was starting to digest itself because you didn't have the capacity to go eight hours without a meal, okay? So you were freaking out completely then for the rest of your life any time someone who's really close to you and i want you to really breathe deep and be totally present a few people were saying like i'm kind of getting it breathe deeper open bigger and let this sink in a little bit more and just trust that it will so for the rest of your life anytime you really get close to somebody you start to feel like they're slipping away you start freaking out and you start wanting to uh, you start wanting to grab them, and so you do grab them, and that causes them to end up leaving. So now you have this pattern in your life of relationships, all unbeknownst to you. So you might go for I don't know, you might go for relationship counseling, you might go and do Reiki, you might go do this and that to try to handle. I don't know what's going on. I'm just stressed out of my mind, and I, and I now now I'm going through three weeks of heartbreak because the next person left after the last 42 left because I'm always getting abandoned. Now check this out because this is going to be the deepest thing so far. We get to build on. I'm glad you asked the question when you did, Terry. So at the physical level in the body of that little baby that is still still dwelling inside of you unreleased unreleased inside of you there's that baby now let's be aware of it and then let's just contemplate one more time how many of those might we have inside of us from the first year of life second year of life completely different situations third year of life fourth year of life fifth year of life sixth year of life now but we're going to focus on that one then as you start to get a little bit older, you start to notice that you have those feelings, only now you have to explain them because you're seven, eight, nine, ten years old. You're feeling them, so you start to create a story about them. So in your physical body, there's this sensation of ah, panic and physical uncomfortableness. In your emotional body is this feeling of sadness and fear and terror of being abandoned. In your mental body, the story develops about what that means and how I can't trust people and how, you know, people leave and you just, you, you just get abandoned after you get close to people and that story grows and in your universe, so we just handle physical body, emotional body, mental body. Now in your universe, 
an endless string of people are going to show up and leave, show up and leave in order to give you a chance to re-experience those emotions, become conscious of it, heal it, dissolve it, and be on the other side of it. But we never do. We battle and we contemplate and we argue and we join Facebook groups for people who suffer from abandonment issues. And we, we join the anti-narcissist movements because it's their fault that they left me. They're just selfish narcissist son of a bitch. Duh. Okay, so we do everything in the world except for get anywhere near the actual issue. And when someone sits down in front of me, within a matter of seconds of talking to me, I can see the whole thing. And instead of helping them to change the people they deal with in the universe, instead of helping them to change their thoughts and their beliefs in their mind, instead of just helping them to release the emotions, I help them do all of it at the same time. We dissolve the physical sensations that were the root of it and the emotions and the story and suddenly those abandonment things never happen in their life again. That's spell breaking. And... I can tell you when I work with one person on one issue, very often someone comes to me with, you know, my relationships suck. And an hour later, they don't have cancer anymore. You know, or they come to me with a money issue and we work on it. And an hour later, their partner becomes more loving. <laughs> and... Uh, this is – okay, interesting, interesting. Check this out. Karen uh, Praxi and Samantha both just commented, and you can get a couple examples of what happens from spell breaking. Like literally as I finished saying it, those two comments just showed up. So uh, check this out with Karen. Uh, is it okay, Terry, if, if I highlight one of these yeah, for a minute? Is that cool? It would be awesome. Okay, so th this is so – like literally I just said it. So check this out. I worked with Karen. She watched – a video of me doing a spell break and she had multiple growths disappear completely off of her body it's there she ended up getting in and working with me and now dyslexia fears that she's had her whole life one single spell break can dissolve so many different traumatic things. And, and I view them like octopus. So imagine a, a, a stack of octopuses or imagine a room full of octopus, right? In a way, now this is, I, I've never talked about it this way. This is going to totally help somebody, maybe a lot of people. Imagine a room full of octopus or octopi. And for whatever reason, you want that room octopi free. You know, you want them all gone. And you don't have a backhoe or a bulldozer, so you got to get them out one at a time. Well, that's really how resolving these traumas works because our mind, our body, our emotional bodies are full of these issues. And that issue of the child with laying in the crib hungry shows up in later life as all of these issues, abandonment issues, maybe digestive issues – that turns into eventually something that shows up on the x-rays. And here's this mass of issues in their life that all tie back to one single issue of laying in the bed for 15 minutes too long, starving. What a what a, a, a beautiful example. I'm really glad, um, um, Karen, that you just chimed in and, and sparked that for me. Uh, so how, how can I, how can I help further? Ooh, this is great. Um, so I, I, something I wanted to share that as you were speaking showed up for me. Um, so a lot of people talk about unconditional love. You know, it's kind of a buzzword and people have been saying it for years and years. Um, Brian, I just want to share with the viewers that like, I actually really experienced that. I experienced it the first time I met you. And I experienced it when I came to tell you that I was sorry. And, you know, there's a lot of us that say, oh, it's okay, I forgive you. And you're like, I felt it and I knew it. And that's the truth of actually living it and walking it and being present to it. So there's been a lot of conversation off and on in the group and there's been a lot of posts and a lot of people talking about unconditional love. And yet... I see certain things happen and I don't see some of us um, behaving with unconditional love and really coming from two places. One is self-love and the other is love of others. So maybe you could talk a little bit about self-love, unconditional love. 
Mm, wow. Beautiful. I am very happy to. Uh, and I feel like there's, so there's a whole bunch of stuff happening in a whole bunch of people right now, too. So, yay. All right. So I encourage you to breathe deep. Breathe deeply. And just relax a little bit so that this can go past your mind. You know, we, we've all had enough water off a duck's back, right? Let's open those feathers and let some of it soak in. So when we were born to those crazy ass people that we call parents, you know, we chose that. We chose that. I have infinite respect for my parents and they absolutely were the worst parents in the world and they were the perfect parents for me. I firmly believe that as infinite unlimited beings, we choose our parents, we choose our life experiences, because if you're an infinite unlimited being projecting out of eternal bliss into time and space to have this experience, you know, people people joke in Hawaii, when people are visiting Hawaii, they ask us in Hawaii, where do you guys go for vacation? You know, <laughs> where do people who live in Hawaii go for vacation? Well, where does an infinite unlimited being dwelling in eternal bliss go for vacation? They go to hell. <laughs> they go to earth school. Let's go suffer, man. Make me hurt. Come on, leave me in the crib for a little while, mom. <laughs> you know, rape me, beat me. And I don't mean like the way some people, I mean, like, let's suffer here so that we can experience everything. Well, there ain't a lot of unconditional love available on this side of eternity. At the eternal level, that's all there is. On this side, there isn't. So we talk about it. We hunger for it. We're, we're yearning for it. Our parents didn't have it to give the vast majority of the time. They were bankrupt. They were dealing with their own trauma. Nobody helped them. Nobody had any means. Thank you. Nobody had any, they, they, nobody showed your parents how to unconditionally love. They were stressing about the lack of commas on their bank account. They were stressing about being left in the crib themselves. They were battling with each other for whatever little scrap of energy and love and comfort they could possibly get. So when we're raised in that environment, we don't get it poured into us. How can we possibly give it? to anybody else and so this leads to a really powerful question this topic of self-love I mean how many people are talking about self-love these days and Terry we could you and I could obviously just do a two or three hour live stream on self-love so to squeeze this into a matter of minutes and, and make it count and make it help here's how I see it everybody's talking about self-love and virtually no one talking about it is doing it. Everybody's talking about unconditional love and virtually no one talking about it has ever experienced five seconds of it. So it's not to put anybody down. It's just look for yourself, okay? So self-love from the level five paradigm is an infinitely different reality than self-love from any other reality. And, and I want to go really deep. I, I kind of got tuned into the comments there for a minute. I want to tune into you and I want you to hear this and feel it as much as you can. In the level one, two, three, and four paradigms, we're a little self with an S, and most of us believe that there's a big self with a big S, the self, the infinite self, and that we're not the same. We're separate. And so when we say self-love, we're thinking, well, how do I learn to love myself? Instantaneously, you're up against all of your rules about how you don't deserve love. Instantaneously, you're up against what you selfish little bitch. How dare you? Who do you think you are? Do you think our house is made of money? Do you think money grow on trees? So, we're the minute we even turn our minds to think about self love, every rule. Oh, this is so good. You know how I said when you put on your business hat, guess who's under it? It's that person. So, there's no such thing as business, it's just a person doing stuff. When you think self-love, guess who you apply that to? The self that you are absolutely convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt doesn't deserve love and will never get it. No matter how much you spout it, no matter how much you talk about it, no matter how much you level for yourself, oh, it's all love, 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 deep inside, 
be honest about how rarely you feel it. In the level five paradigm, when I talk about self-love, here's what I'm talking about. You are the center of the universe. Infinite, unlimited energy is arising out of eternal being. It's This energy is flowing into time and space to have this experience. The whole universe is your body. And I'm going beyond all the spiritual talk about it to the reality of it. The universe is your body. If you can see the farthest star through a telescope, the telescope and the farthest star are in you or you could not experience them. The universe is your body. You're the source of the universe. You're the process through which the universe comes into being and you're the universe and you are experiencing yourself, what you call yourself, your body is a cell in the universe and everybody else is cells in that body. From the, And I could go on, but just to give you that basic picture. Now, what is self-love? Self-love is to love the self and the self is all that is. It's a whole different picture. You want to be as selfish as you can possibly be. It just has a totally different meaning than what we were told by those people who, when they talk selfish, it was down their bony, bony finger pointed at our faces telling us that was selfish was wrong and bad. No, you can't be selfless until you're selfish. You cannot give love until you love yourself. You cannot live the life that you want and create the universe there until you realize that you are the source of it and you love this self. So sum it up in a couple sentences. The self is all there is. And self-love is everything that matters. And until you have that, you really don't have anything. So, so these people that are... Everybody that's basically trying to teach self-love, everybody that's seeking self-love, everybody that's talking about self-love. By the way, I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about this because this has got to be stirring up some stuff. <laughs> They're all doing it from the level four paradigm, which can't get anywhere near unconditional love or self-love because self-love with a capital S is to love all that is starting in the center. <laughs> Goosebump moment. Thank you. Yes, type in your comments. Uh, two quick things that showed up that I want to just tell our viewers. Number one, share, share, share. There's the invite your friends button. Use it. Invite friends. Share. And then those of you who came on late, when this is over, you're going to want to go back and watch it from the beginning. And those of you who've been here since the very beginning, I'm going to recommend you watch this one, two, three, four, and more times because there's a lot of nuggets here. There's a lot of a juice, and I want you to get everything you can out of it. So here we are, and, and we're walking around in the universe, and um, we're you know working on ourselves, and we're paying for personal development, and we're reading self-help books, and going to self-help webinars, and all of this stuff. How does that actually potentially maybe hurt us if it does? Yeah, it, it does. So it's like if you had, let's say someone someone ate a little bit of dairy and they were a little bit allergic. Now, I personally believe that everybody on the planet is technically allergic to dairy because di dairy products are for baby cows. But even dairy products aren't for baby cows. Only warm milk from a mama cow is for the baby cow. Okay, I'm not trying to get political. I'm just saying Look at it. That's who gets milk is baby cows. Now, so someone has a little bit of dairy and now they have a little bit of mucus and then they have a little bit of dairy three or four times in a row. So they have a lot of mucus. But instead of looking at what did I eat, instead they do what most people do and they go to a doctor. And the doctor says, let me take a, let me take a look. Okay, physician's de desk reference says mucus and – oh, you have an upper respiratory infection. So now you have a diagnosis. You've been named what you have. You have something. It's a cold. Shit, I thought I just was coughing and sneezing. No, I, I, no, you have a cold. So now I have this cold. I have this upper respiratory infection. Now that I know what it is, what do I do about it? And that's what the doctor does next. They write a prescription. And so the funny thing about prescriptions is that most of them, most of them cause you to later need more prescriptions 
because of the side effects. And that is very much true with self-help and self-improvement. It is very much true. So here you are, you're an infant. Uh, oh, by the way, had the doctor said, what did you eat? <laughs> you would have gone, well, let me think about it. I don't know. I had some dairy in the dark. So, oh, are you aware that consuming dairy can create a tremendous amount of, of mucus? And if you do it repeatedly, the mucus will start to overwhelm your system. And, oh, so doctor, what you're saying is go home and toss the G's, right? Or, or don't eat it very often. Okay. But that's not what happens most of the time, is it? Same thing with self-help. And I'm going to, boy, this is where I'm going to get controversial. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I don't know if you beautiful, amazing beings know this or not. Terry, I know that you know that there's there's somebody out there in the world right now that um, I don't want to I'm not I'm not picking at the person. I'm just telling you, if you want to be a law of attraction coach, certified <laughs> law of attraction coach, you can pay the low, low price of forty seven dollars and you can be a certified law of attraction coach. And then you qualify to fill people with bullshit and confuse them forever. Now, nobody's wrong or bad because if those people didn't want to be confused, they would not have been inspired to go to that $47 certified law of attraction coach, right? So nobody's wrong, nobody's bad, no, it's not, no criticism, but, but let's look at the effects of it. So here you are, you're going through life, and instead of looking at what you ate, i.e., did I lay in the crib for too long? <laughs> you know, do I have 30 or 40,000 potential spells deeply within my tissues from the traumatic moments and the emotions that got frozen and over the years, the stories and the ideas and theories that I developed. And then I went to a list of endless gurus who all interpreted my crap from the third paradigm and the fourth paradigm and gave me an endless number of diagnoses, prognoses, and prescriptions, I mean, who wouldn't end up more confused than they started? Who would not end up more frustrated than they started? And let's do this. If any, I just, I, I just got a whoa there, a w, W-H-O-A, whoa, one of those, okay? So if you can relate to what I'm saying right now on this self-help journey, that you have spent time, you've spent money, you've gone to expert after expert after expert after expert, you've gotten diagnosis after diagnosis after diagnosis, you've gotten prognosis after prognosis of what this means and what's going to happen, and then you got your prescription, and you bought it, and you went home, and you took it, and your cold didn't go away. In fact, now on top of your upper respiratory infection, now you have a lower respiratory infection, and you're confused because you're like, but, 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 and then you're going to do what? You're going to go to the next seminar where they're going to tell you another solution and another – or maybe this time you're going to go to an energy worker or maybe even better, you go to a psychic. Now, I ain't making any of those people wrong whatsoever. I'm saying that until you deal with the deepest, 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 deepest root issues, you are wasting money, you are confusing yourself, you're frustrating yourself, and you're got not getting anywhere near to solving the actual issue you're simply dealing with systems just like the pharmaceutical industry does that was very powerful that was that was really great and, and gang just keep on with your comments we promise that we will take a look uh, we're at over 500 loves and uh, i dig that so thank you for that wow yeah. yay 500 so i'm going to go uh one other place with you and then we'll just see where we go after that uh, so, Sounds dangerous. Yeah, uh, I love dangerous. Um, so I have lots and lots of client family members that have been very successful, um, making three, four million a year, um, have a good family life. And if I say to them, how are things going? You would think that their answer would be things are going great. You know, I'm a best selling author. I've been on this TV show, that TV show, I've made this many millions of dollars, and I have freedom and free time with my family. And that's not typically what I hear. I hear all the stuff that's still wrong, still broken, not quite right yet. So I want to talk to them because that's talking to all of the Heartrepreneur community because all of us are that, right? So I'm going to use my own life and personal example. I have people come up to me all the time at events and they say to me, you are so lucky. I'm like, lucky. Okay. And they say, yeah, I mean, you've had eight multi-million dollar businesses and you've been married for 40 years and blah, 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 blah. You have three homes. You just have everything. You're so lucky. 
And the truth is, number one, I'm not lucky. I worked my butt off to build every business that I have, and that's true. Uh, number two, I also work at my relationship every single day. Number three, there's lots of things in my life that when you do read my new book in 2019, you will see there's a lot of unlucky experiences, quote unquote, that happened. So I don't believe that um, my client family members who are saying, yes, I have money, I have this and I have this, but, 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 are abnormal because I myself could look at myself and say, yes, I have this, 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 and this, but I also have this, this, and this. What do we do about that? Well, you know, that's, it's deep. This is one of those where we may have some, some back and forth, Terry. So I, I'm going to give this example of I worked with one of the wealthiest billionaires in the world, um, like at this point probably number 30 in the world, I, and generating billions a year in profit, sole owner of a giant company. And when we got on the first call and he said uh, – I am very, very, very close friends with, and then he named two of the biggest names, you know, in personal dev, big multi-million selling authors with programs. And he said, and I am frustrated out of my mind because neither of them could help me. They've taken me to the people that they go to and they couldn't help me. And... I see there's something in what you do, Brian. There's something in what you do, but I don't know what it is yet. I'm curious about what planet you're from. <laughs> and, you know, like there's something in what you do that, that makes that difference. And he said, you know, so what am I missing? What am I not seeing? And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what some might call bragging for a minute. I just – I don't be – because I don't believe in any of the rules. I don't believe in false humility and I don't believe in false pride. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell it like I see it. He said to me when we were done, he said, like, I literally have been working on this for decades with these people. You are, like, unquestionably the best. What the hell did you just do to me? And I thought about the question. What did I just do? Like, how is this possible? I was a little flabbergasted myself. So the first piece that I would like to encourage you, if you don't consider yourself in the top 50 billionaires as far as money and, quote, success, just take a little relief to know <coughs> that – those people come to me too. So it ain't you. There's nothing wrong with you. You can allow yourself to have, some people do, allow themselves to have enough money or more than enough money. Some people do allow themselves to have that money and the relationship. Some people do have the house and the comforts. They cause themselves to suffer in other ways so here's here's what i see at the at the deepest root of this entire topic it's this you're an infinite unlimited being projecting out of eternity into time and space because you are infinite unlimited energy there can't be anything good about you or bad about you that is a 100 percent mental bullshit you cannot be right or wrong you can't be deserving or undeserving. You can't be worthy or unworthy. However, you were born into a system of thought and people and religion and politics and medicine and war that is designed to cause you to feel ultimately when it's all said and done undeserving and unworthy. And what I have found at the deepest root, if, if, if someone came up to me and um, a, a brilliant marketing mind once gave this example. So let, let me let me slip a piece of business in here. And this business um, um, person said, if you really want to come up with the best idea in the world, pretend that someone came up to you and put a gun up against your head and said you have one minute to solve this marketing problem or the bullet goes in and next it's your family. Now that's not a pleasant thing. A lot of people freak out, ah, but if you don't freak out about it, if you just, whoa, if I was in that situation and I had to solve this, what would I come up with in that minute? Well, I use that question quite a bit. And if I had one minute to tell you the essence of the root of the root of what you're asking, Terry, it's this. 
ultimately, whether you would agree with me or disagree with me, I don't care. Ultimately, you allow yourselves the life that you believe you deserve. Nothing more and nothing less. You allow yourself the exact life that you believe you deserve. The amount of love, the amount of this, the amount of that. And so I see that people either punish themselves in their undeserving, the huge majority, it's obviously money. I mean, you look at the number of people that struggle with money, it's obviously number one. However, the people that do allow themselves that, they simply punish themselves in other areas. So they divert that undeserving to those other areas. So does that, does that answer it adequately? It does, it does. Brian, if people want to go deeper, um, at some point, can you drop in or tell them how they can also get your book? I really recommend that people read your book. And um, gang, I want you to know something. You know, book is a book is a book. This is not a book uh, because the, it really isn't. It comes with a massive amount of video trainings and a lot of uh, deep, deep issues are covered. It's not superficial videos. If you don't know one thing by now, you haven't been paying attention. Brian gives it all away. Brian goes deep uh, and he's not afraid to share. So um, when you get a, a moment, I think that would be helpful. So um, I'm going to put you on the spot. Is that okay? Ooh, spot pudding. Uh, Yay. Spot pudding. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you'd be open to this, and it just showed up for me as we're talking about entrepreneurs and my client family members, and I'm going to throw something out there, so just see what you think. Would you be willing to do uh, maybe a small group program for our entrepreneurs and for my client family members? And let me tell you why I'm asking. Um, number one, I have been in some of your group programs, and... I'm just getting goosebumps. They've literally have blown me away. Um, just last week, I think it was last Thursday, I got off of that program that I'm in and I had like a major, major breakthrough. I mean, it was just incredible and it literally continued throughout the weekend and it's just, just been one of the biggest breakthroughs of my life. So. I don't know if that's something that you might be willing to do, and I know I'm putting you on the spot. It just came up for me, and if you want to think about it, that's fine. What do you think? Uh, I want to really think about it for a little while, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes. so what, what we were – you we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second here. So so you, you and I are already discussing – Hawaii and a few people the minute they found out that I have the that I do the private work here in Hawaii several entrepreneurs reached out to me so we're going to be discussing that this would be an online program that's something that is way more accessible yeah okay and those um, of you who like really would like to go to Hawaii and like to experience what it's actually like to work with Brian in Hawaii just in in the comments do you hashtag Hawaii Hashtag Hawaii if you're interested in going to Hawaii. Who isn't? Awesome. Who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> it's it is very, well. You know what? Check this out. I'm I'm actually my my office computer would, my office computer wouldn't start. So check this out. Wow. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. Can you imagine yourself sitting there in this environment? This, this is the magical space. My looks like my my uh, video is lagging a little bit, but that's okay. You get a feel for the space. And those um, of you who have been there. So you could do hashtag Hawaii and you could talk, you know, a line or two about your experience and get us all excited. But I, I was just putting out there whether or not you might do a small group, you know, online kind of thing. Let's do it. Let's absolutely do it. And and so you figure out how, how to find out who's interested in what we can do. All right, Terry, I got two things I want to address and then let me throw that right back to you on that topic. You got it. Number one, number one about the book. I just typed in the URL for my book. So he, here's how I did this. I have a um, – my website gives the PDF of my book away. It's the whole book. Um, it went number one international bestseller on Amazon in multiple categories overnight. And we've got about 300 um, five-star reviews on Amazon as well. So the physical and Kindle copies are on Amazon if you look for Break Your Self-Help Addiction um, on Amazon. If you want the PDF for free, just go to BreakYourselfHelpAddiction.com and on the website, there's an opt-in and then we give you access to – like in my opinion, I would put the videos that I give with this book, I would put them on the par with 
any five thousand dollar personal development program that yeah. I've ever seen and yeah. beyond because there's information there that's not anywhere else. Um, I just want to let everybody know that link is there. And Terry, wherever you share this live, obviously you can you can give the link in a more convenient way. Cindy said something a moment ago that probably a lot of people feel. She said it seems overwhelming to think until you deal with all the traumas that are there possibly thousands of traumas, seems like that might be overwhelming. Do we need to address each one or are there core issues that once dealt with will change the rest? And that is a super important question. I'm probably not the only one thinking that. Love you, Cindy. Um, okay, so let me, let me say this. At the root of it all, you have one core spell. You have one deepest core spell and everybody on the planet has it. Everybody does. And then right above that, there are numerous spells that have to do with simply being in existence on this planet. Then there's all your personal spells. And when someone comes to me, their level of readiness, their openness to how far they're really willing to go and how open they are and how done with the suffering they are, quite frankly, that's what dictates how deeply I'm able to go. And I can simply say, I've never had an unhappy client. I do a free webinar and I have dozens of testimonials the next day from my free stuff, okay? So you don't have to deal with all of them. And when someone sits down with me for a, even an hour or they do the four days with me here in Hawaii, we erase one after another, after another, after another. And when it's erased, when I say erase, I don't mean it's like it's going to come back. It is erased at the deepest roots. So I, re I just, I really wanted to um, handle that. And that's something I kind of left out when we were talking about the spell break. So you want to, you want to talk more about this possible program or do you have more questions, Terry? Um, I want to talk about the program and maybe, um, I don't know, since we're just talking about it in the moment, uh, what that could look like. I mean, I would like to go, I'd like to be in on the program. Uh -huh. If you want to join me in the program, let's do this um, hashtag program. Let's make it real simple. You want to go to Hawaii, it's hashtag Hawaii. If you want to join this program that I just threw out there and Brian allowed me to and said yes to, do hashtag program. Um, I can tell you this. In like the first orientation session of any program that I've been on with Brian, that session by itself has been worth, I don't even know, it, you know, literally I have to say priceless. It's been a priceless amount. Um, and just the orientation session, like before we even got in and, and it's some of the people who are in the group uh, or have been in Brian's groups, you can comment on that. It, it's just amazing that that kind of thing can happen. And I, I can tell you that if you're afraid of this, like any of this, anything we talked about, and you're like, oh, this is like really scary stuff, or it goes against stuff I believe, then you probably need it even more than you think you need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because truly, when I was very upfront in the beginning, I, I allowed myself to be scared. I scared myself. And then I created a reaction. I'm thank goodness, in a place where I am fully open and still going deeper, uh, working with Brian and continuing to work on myself and continuing to release things in my life. I've been on this planet for 60 years. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so I don't know where you are. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Your age does not matter. Your life experience matters. Living bliss and really having and I mean really having, not just talking about people always talk about, oh, I'm going to have my best year ever. And then at the end of the year, the next year, they're going to have their best year ever. Or Monday, I'm going to lose, you know, 50 pounds. Or I'm going to do this, quote, diet or this, and I'm going to lose weight. If you really want to stop all of that talking and make all of these transformations, hashtag Hawaii if you want to go to Hawaii. Hashtag group. By the way, you can hashtag both if you want to because I'm going to do <laughs> Um, anything else you want to say about either of those, Brian? Um, yeah, I just um, – for one thing, I want to say that my um, my page just closed. Obviously, my connection's up because I'm on with you. Yep. My Facebook page, I tried to refresh and the whole page went away. So I'm not seeing any comments right now. I will continue to work on that. If you guys are typing in things, I want to respond. Um, as far as the – as far as the program – well, number one, I would – 
my greatest joy outside of my family, my greatest joy is actually sitting for four days with the one-on-one uh, people that come out and, and sit with me here in Hawaii and, and watching that happen and the uh, unlimited magic. I also absolutely love doing the group um, work that we're going to do here. Uh, that is just going to be completely off the chain. What, I, what I've gotten into more and more is doing these online programs. And I love what you said, Terry. Like I'm – when you're living infinite, unlimited being, the feeling of how much do I give away so that I still have stuff left to sell, that consideration disappears. And so – in the, when I do an online group, and there are a few a few members of my online groups that are in here, every time we finish the session, I've probably done so. I've done five or six conscious creation programs, and I've done five Freedom Seven programs, and every so you know it's hundreds of sessions. Every time we finish the session, every one of us in the group looks at each other and says, that's the best damn session that's ever had because it's expanding every time. The energy of the people that come to the program stimulates the questions that they're going to ask, which stimulates what comes through me. And to think about working with a group of entrepreneurs, um, what would actually – I see the smile on your face too <laughs> – what will come out of that is a very beautiful thing to think about. Thank you. So because I put you on the spot, um, you know, we just I just asked and thank you for saying yes. Um, whenever you guys have a, a link or a page or something for us, we won't go into details today because we don't know them in this moment. Um, Brian will pop in and then again, it's hashtag Hawaii, hashtag program. Um, and that way, Brian can make sure you get the information and you get the links. So before we close out, what would you like to finish with? What would you like people to really walk away with? And what actions would you like them to take? And, and I want to thank you. You've been so, so generous with your time. I got you up early this morning in Hawaii. So I really appreciate it, Brian. Thank you so much. Uh, you're, you are infinite and infinitely welcome. And I'm, I'm really grateful to do this. I mean, this is what I'm here on the planet to do. So if I have to get up early to do it, so be it um, once in a while. What I would close with uh, is I would just tell you, and I'm only talking to you. So if you're seeing me and hearing me, you know that I'm just talking to you, only you. Because you're me and I'm you and we're actually one. And that's not a theory or a clever spiritual saying to me anymore. I would remind you, you are perfect and you're complete and you're eternal. You're not good. Sorry. But I'm not sorry because you're also not bad. You're not right and you're not wrong. There's nothing better or worse about you. You can release, if you want to, you can just literally release every one of those things because you're not good, you're not bad, you're not wrong, you're not right. There's nothing other than perfection about you from what I can see. You are loved, infinitely loved, and you are love itself. That's what you are. My comments just came back, so let me get back to that. Yay, I'm glad that happened. You are completely flawless in every way. You are the infinite, unlimited energy. From where I sit, you are the source of the universe and you're the process through which the universe comes into being and you're the universe. And if you aren't ready to hear that or see that, I acknowledge that. I honor and respect that. And if you feel that I'm um, you know, wrong according to your spiritual beliefs and your religious beliefs, I honor that too. That's wonderful. Thank you for letting me know that. And anything that you want to be can happen. Anything that you want to be can change. Anything you prefer is available to you. Your power and your ability, your capacity, your capability, your competence is infinitely beyond even you who have kind of opened up to your awesomeness, you're infinitely more awesome than you have ever let yourself even think. You deserve – I'm going to say something to you. I promise you've never heard from anybody else. You deserve the highest heaven and you deserve the lowest hell. It was never about deserving in the first place. You deserve it all. The question is which will you choose and I'm here to tell you that you actually can choose and have it work. 
by letting go of all of those anchors that were never you in the first place. They were never yours in the first place. You don't have to work with me in order to wake up. Uh, if you want to, if it seems fun to you, I welcome it. And we can have a blast. And you can literally experience the life, the body, the health, the business, the wealth, the relationships, the life, even creating the world of your dreams by stopping the momentum of infinite unlimited ability that you've been pouring into what is and turning and pouring it into what you prefer and I can help you do that. You don't have to hire me. You don't have to pay me. My book's free. Videos are free. I do charge for my time for people to get closer to me. I, I chose to make my work that I am here to do. I chose to make that my business. So I do it as a business and I love to, I welcome playing with you in any case. Um, Terry, I guess you and I will, um, discuss like how the people that say Hawaii, the people that say event, we could actually get started really fast. So I did see wrapping up here. I did see that several people said, I want to go deeper. I do want to do this. I do. Um, I would like to, uh, oh, 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 and there's one question I probably should answer Terry. Check this out. Yeah. I don't understand. Is Brian going to do the work of clearing in the program? Is he going to teach people how to do the clearing for themselves and for others? Uh, it's either Ivan or Yvonne. I'm going to go with Ivan. I hope that's right. Ivan. Uh, I, Okay, Ivan said, I don't understand. Is Brian going to do the work of clearing in the program or is he going to teach people how to do the clearing for themselves and for others? The answer is yes. <laughs> I was going to say yes. I'm, I'm absolutely going to do it. I'm going to. So you know what? Hey, uh, how about is okay, Terry? I know we're probably over time. I'd like to. I'll tell you what happens in group programs. Even though this is going to be unique, it's going to be for heart entrepreneurs. So here's what everyone can expect when you contemplate doing the um, – if you guys are in for this program. First of all, I will work out a special um, pricing for entrepreneurs. We'll definitely do that. Thank you. And, and second, when I do a group program, here's how I normally do it. We use Zoom um, video calls so that everybody comes on live. Everybody's totally interactive. This will be a, a fairly small group program, I would imagine. And everybody gets personal attention from me. And we meet for a number of weeks, usually six or seven weeks, we'll work that out, and we'll have an orientation session where we come on and everybody kind of gets to know each other, we see each other, feel each other, and then I'm going to channel everything that everybody is wanting. You guys are going to set your intention, what you most want to get out of the program, and listen to me. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. I don't care how many things you've tried. That's irrelevant to me. Yeah, but, yeah, but I... Yeah, but don't do anything for you. And then after that orientation session, we have a number of sessions, six or seven weeks, where we meet eye to eye, face to face on Zoom calls. You bring me your challenges. You bring me your spells. I help you dissolve them, and I do it in a way that helps you to master how to begin dissolving your own spells. I I don't let people get dependent on me. Um, it's quite the opposite, opposite. What I really do is I help you to become the infinite unlimited being that you actually are, that you've been hearing about from everybody else for all these years, and I help you dissolve everything else that's in the way, so that's what will happen during this program. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, those of you who have questions, just feel free to keep the comments coming. Once we close out, we'll still go back to the page. We'll answer everything couple of recommendations. Number one, definitely re-listen. There is so much here. I'm going to go back and re-listen because I couldn't take notes at the same time and there are things I want to recall. Um, second of all, let Brian know how much you appreciate his time and the work that he does in any way that that shows up for you. And then again, um, if you have any curiosity, if anything resonated, um, and you're like, hmm, what would it be like to work with Brian in Hawaii? Then it's hashtag Hawaii. I'm so excited that I just followed my intuition and I said, Brian, would you be willing? And thank you for saying yes. Um, hashtag program. If you'd like to be a part of an online program that I, I'm saying yes to um, and that we can do together as entrepreneurs, I know that will be a very special experience. And speaking also to my client family members, this, in addition to the work that you do with me, is kind of magical. So I have this other kind of crazy inspired action. So I'm going to ask 
my client family members and entrepreneurs a question. I haven't asked Brian if he's willing, so <laughs> um, uh -oh. I just realized that. Oh, I'm going to ask anyway. Um, would it be helpful and would it be uh, cool if the, I at my next event, if we worked on your business the way I typically work on your business, and if Brian worked on all the other pieces, and so there was a joint combined program approach. I don't know, Brian, if that works for you. <laughs> it just came out. This thing uh, I, do. I gotta, I gotta say, it literally, it's, it's the only thing that makes sense to me. I mean, I, I see. Hmm. I, I, I'm gonna drop one more bomb here. I'll, I'll be super fast with this. I just do gotta it, say do this. It, okay, do so it. This is the point behind all the other points of this. Okay, so I've known for about 30 years. That I was, and this is going to maybe sound really bombastic to some of you. I'm okay with that. That's you, not me. I have known that I am here to help bring this paradigm of infinite, unlimited being to the business world. And it is, in my opinion, literally insane to attempt to, to do business from the first four paradigms. Now, if I'm accurate in what I'm about to say, you feel it for yourself. For 400 years, our planet has lived under a false paradigm from Putin. Hear this. This is, this is so big, our normalcy, normalcy bias might shut it down. Don't let that happen. Be curious. This 400-year-old paradigm that we're meat suits in a machine driven by fate in a clockwork universe that's going to kick our asses and spit us out dead at the end. We're living our lives and our businesses and our relationships under that paradigm. We're here we are. We're hearing from Einstein and Tesla and all the great quantum physicists and all the great teachers that the universe is energy. It's not physical. Why are we still living our, quote, business in a paradigm that we know is false? And here we are reaching for the law of attraction, trying to be spiritual, trying to do all these things. When this paradigm is here waiting for us to embrace it and step into effortless abundance, which is here right now waiting for us. So it's time for that paradigm to come in. And Rob just said, um, thank you, Ted. I appreciate that. And T uh, Rob just said, I thought Brian said there is no such thing as business. That's right. There is no such thing as business. However, everybody's still embracing and chasing success in business. So I bring this paradigm in so that people can expand it 100% and realize Oh, wait, there's no business. It's just people sharing information and value and communication to create a flow of currency so that they can experience the level of abundance that they want. That's my definition of what other people call business. And that fits perfectly with Heartrepreneur and perfectly with what I have been teaching client family members for 20 years. So, I mean, that totally goes together. So, if, if the thought of an event, I, I have no idea. Brian and I would have to talk. This is one of the things that just came out of me in the moment. Um, then do hashtag event if you'd be interested in coming to an event where we actually mesh kind of concepts together, um, which, you know, as we're in this moment, just felt really critically important for me. And those of you who are with me this weekend, my protégés, um, man, would this have been cool if we had thought of this in advance? So now we're thinking of it for next week. <laughs> um, Brian, any, any last words as we sign off? I love you. We love you back. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks to all of you. Keep sharing. Keep commenting. We'll be here with you. Keep being active in the Heartrepreneur group. Hashtag Hawaii. Hashtag program. Hashtag event. Got them all. Brian, thank you so much. Love you. Thanks, Terry. Love you. Aloha, everybody. Bye.